Hello, welcome to Think Blue. I'm Laura Becker, and I am honored to welcome our guest, Sully Erna, founder and lead singer of American rock band Godsmack. Sully, thank you for spending time with us. So we invited you here today to talk about music and talk about mental health and sort of how the two collide. So let's just dive in. Sure. Um, I want to know a little bit more about Sully. So you grew up in Lawrence, uh, Massachusetts. When did you first start playing music? Um, it was very, very young. I actually, my dad is a musician. He's a trumpet player, um, still alive, and he still actually plays a little bit. Um, but he came here from Sicily uh, when he was 17 and didn't speak English, none of that. And music is all he had. My grandmother's brother was a famous composer in Sicily. So music kind of always ran through my bloodlines, I guess. Um, and from watching my dad's bands when I was young in the basement, he had these little like jazz bands and um, I kind of fell in love with the drums at a very young age and was taking lessons by three and a half years old. So I literally was kind of raised under the piano. So when did you decide that rock music was going to be your thing? For a while, it was just studying music. It was learning how to play the drums, learning how to read sheet music and all that, studying some of the greats like the Buddy Riches and those kind of jazz players. And then I got into my 11, 12 year old stage and my drum instructor would just tell me like, you have a really good ear for music. You should just try picking up some of the records that you like, putting on some headphones and playing along because it seems that you have an easier time hearing something and playing it than reading it. Uh, he's, he just thought I was a little bit more passionate when I played, when I could just like close my eyes and jam. My first album I ever bought was Aerosmith Rocks. And from there, I fell into the rock and roll whole lifestyle, um, which led me to down, you know, some really fun and great roads and some really dark roads, um, you know, through addiction and, and things like that. Uh, Cause I fell into that lifestyle of just partying and rock and roll and that kind of thing. And so for me, some of the abuse uh, started at a very early age. Um, when you're young and you're cool and you think you're cool and all that stuff doesn't matter, right? And then all of a sudden it becomes habit forming and then it's a problem later in your life. That's that's kind of a snapshot of, of how I got sucked into the rock and roll world. Not that I want to blame rock and roll on my downfall at times, because um, it really is just music and it's in, very inspiring. But I think it was just seeing the imagery of all my icons then, the Steven Tyler's, the Joe Perry's, the Jimmy Page and the Robert Plants and, you know, all those bands were just super, super cool to me. And when you're young and you're inspired and influenced by um, those kind of epic, iconic figures, it's really easy to also fall into the, the habits that go along with that and creating that aura. Yeah, I'm going to get into the habits um, in a little bit because I do think that's that's very interesting. When we're talking about music, and I know that you write some of your own lyrics, where do you pull that inspiration from? It's interesting because, again, being a drummer my whole life, that was what I did. I bounced from band to band, from group to group, and I was just trying to master that skill and play just about any kind of music. But it wasn't until I decided that you know, going through a series of bands, a series of different locations, growing up, trying to find my way, starving along the way, trying to find gigs, playing for a case of beer and $50 and a package of oodles and noodles and everything else that I did. Uh, it got to the point where I finally landed a um, audition with a band that had a record deal with Warner Brothers. And I got the, they, they hired me for the band and I went on tour and I felt like I finally made it. Um, and, and then the band was just, there was no business sense. Everybody was young, partying, very reckless and irresponsible and the band kind of self-destructed. So to get around to answering your question, when that happened, I quit music and that was around 25 years old. I seen all my friends having a nice car, having a job, having an apartment. And, you know, I felt like a dirt bag. I was sleeping on my sister's couch, borrowing $5 for a pack of cigarettes at the time or whatever I could do to get by. And I was just like, I'm done. I cut my hair off, I got a job, and I went to work. About a year into it, the bug bit me again. Um, and I wanted to play music, but I decided this time I wasn't gonna follow the rules of someone else and be under their leadership. I wanted to do my own thing. I started to learn how to play guitar a little bit, and I decided to sing for the band. And that's those were the very beginning stages of what became Godsmack. 
and that was the first time I became a singer and I was really bad, like really bad. It really kind of gave me that motivation to go out and take cues from my idols, from the Steven Tylers, the James Hetfields, the Lane Staley's, anybody who was out and I was really inspired by vocally. And I took a little bit of this and a little bit of that and I started to hone in my voice to stay in key. That was my first goal was to sing good. And then unfortunately, a friend of mine took his life and I found myself sitting on the floor one day in my girlfriend's bedroom and I was just writing how he must have felt to have gone through that kind of pain to actually do that. You know, a lot of people talk about it, but to actually do it, I thought I felt a lot of pain in my life. And I started thinking, man, what? how deep was that pain to actually go through with it? At a young age, he was probably 19 at the time. And so I was writing in a journal and I ended up writing a song about it called Another Day. Until this day, I've never been able to record it. It's a really heavy song for me. But what that did was that showed me how to write lyrics. It showed me that I have this tool now to vent my emotions through and be able to use therapeutically. And it became an outlet for me. And just getting it onto a piece of paper sometimes and voicing, not trying to write a song, but just voicing my words the way I wanted to, you know, if it was F you one day, I hate the world, then that's what I had to write because I just needed to get it out and scream out loud. And instead of doing it vocally, I did it through a pen and a paper. But then I would carve and manipulate those words and eventually they became what is known now as Godsmack's first album. Wow. Well, I, 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 you talked about tools and and you're, you shared your story about your friend who who took his life by, you know, by suicide you've also created a very successful and very powerful foundation um, focused on mental health. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about this project and how it came to be? So on the latest Godsmack record, I had wrote a song called Under Your Scars. And the song was, once again, I never write anything that hasn't somehow affected me on an emotional level, good or bad. With Under Your Scars, I had went through um, a relationship, a short relationship, and I really kind of was enjoying this person. And I found out that she had some damage. She had some baggage. She had some scars that she carried. And not knowing that, being new in her life, you know, sometimes you say the wrong thing and it can trigger something with someone else. And what I noticed was you, you kind of shut down and you go away. And... It wasn't one of those devastating heartbreaks, but it just kind of made me sad to think like, wow, you know, I wish she could have known me a little bit better. And I wish I would have had the opportunity to just talk to her about it and let her know that it's okay to have this kind of stuff because we all carry our own scars, our own damage. So the song became about acceptance rather than hiding your trauma, right? Rather than hiding these scars, right? I feel the opposite. I feel like we should show them loudly and proudly and wave them to the world to say, hey, these are my battle wounds from life, the challenges and the obstacles that I got over. And I wear them as a badge of honor. Uh, 